My name is Professor Anne Hemingway and this is Dr Kevin Pinto. Um, we are here in central London this afternoon at the Royal College of Radiologists to um, discuss and celebrate the 50th anniversary of the foundation of the Royal College of Radiologists. Um, we're going to be talking a bit about what's happened in imaging in the last 50 years and what we think may happen as we move forward in the next 50 years. Uh, but first of all, we'll just introduce ourselves and how we came to choose on the specialty of radiology. Kevin, do you want to tell us a bit about yourself? Yes, yeah, so my name is Kevin. Uh, I'm a radiology registrar based in London. Radiology appealed to me uh, more so than other specialties, partly because it was one of those few specialties in the hospital that kind of maintained a, a general outlook in, in terms of being covering almost all corners of the hospital. Mm. So whether I was working in the stroke unit or working in the trauma orthopedic unit or whether I was working in the general medical acute take unit, uh, radiology played a vital role. I started in 79. Um, it was, we were at this point of transition. We still had plain film and we, as you know, we would carry piles of plain film around with us, dictated reports to a secretary to take in shorthand or onto a tape. Um, we still, if we did angiography, um, it was cut film and you had to wait between each angiographic run for the film to be developed and then looked at. I think as a junior trainee, we were perhaps a bit more hands-on. I mean, we used to inject all the IVUs. We used to actually operate the injection pump in angio. Um, so we were much more hands-on, I think, in a sense. And lots of those jobs um, have moved to um, other, other professions within the specialty to, to do. The training was, we were smaller departments, there were fewer of us, so I guess it was much more one-to-one. -one. Um, training tended to be much more um, localised in the sense that we didn't have the big training schemes where we moved around. So I think, I think it's changed in that way. I think I've, I've had a good experience both in the district general hospital environments as well as in a big centre um, for different reasons, uh, kind of um, the complexity you get to deal with in a tertiary centre in comparison with a district general hospital where you can kind of um, focus on different, different areas um, is, is quite important to complement each other. Uh, Prof, it'd be really interesting to kind of get your impression as to what you think kind of the biggest workforce challenges are at the moment and how do you think they all kind of change going forward for the next 50 years? So that's a big question. I think that we have um, a huge workload for the number of people. There has, of course, been big expansions in numbers, both training and consultant numbers, but they lag behind the, de the technological developments all the time. Um, and... Manpower remains, I think, um, an issue for us. I mean, I don't know how you feel about that. Yeah, I think I think especially with the advent of kind of cancer screening programs mm. um, in the last few decades and the requirement to um, review those cases has massively increased um, workload as far as kind of I've been exposed to kind of having rotations in breast and GI, mm. GI <laughs> radiology. There will be changes how we manage workload, um, and but carefully doing it so we don't de-skill people as well. I mean, we haven't even touched on the the subject that's going to dominate your future of AI. Yes, um, it's 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 something you're constantly asked. The first thing you're you're asked when you tell someone you're a radiologist, the question is, do you think AI is going to take over your job? Um, and it's something that is the general perception from the population. I think people have very varying impressions as to how they think the role of AI will either assist or take over the job of radiologists. And um, every second radiologist you ask will have a slightly different opinion on, on this kind of thing. Um, but kind of just touching on kind of the workforce side of things that we did dis discuss earlier on. I think it's very much going to be a useful tool. It's going to be used more and more as a tool to help, first of all, um, manage workflows within everything from small centres to large tertiary centres um, and be able to stratify the types of imaging that might require um, a radiologist's review and prioritise that accordingly, as well as 
as time goes on, perform a increasingly important role, say for instance in screening, where as the case base that is developed with time increases, mm -hmm. it would play a more useful role in diagnostics. Just thinking of my sort of 50 years, and every time a new development comes along, people think, oh, is that going to make us, you know, is it going to take away some of our work? Or is it going to... My experience is, is, no, it just gives you even more work. I don't think AI is going to make radiologists redundant at all. It's going to change how you work phenomenally. Um, there's no doubt about that. It's going to change um, at what point you, as the human, have an input into the, into the sort of uh, the diagnostic or interventional process. So it was lovely talking to you, Prof. Uh, it was fascinating to really learn about how things were when you first started, all the developments that have been um, in play since, since you've started training and how things have changed. It's really, it's really been enlightening. Um, yeah. And it's, oh, it's been really, really good to talk to you as well. And I, you know, I'm sort of envious of you at this point, because I think the future is equally exciting for your um, next few decades as well. Um, I won't be actively part of that, but I'm going to watch with great interest. So thank you.